Bible scripture or witnessing somehow. I mean, it's just a, oh my God, now the, the judge is hugging Amber Geiger. I, okay, this is, um, Something is wrong with our people. We are brutalized and victimized and murdered. And before anyone even asks for forgiveness, we are the first to get on TV and say how much we forgive and how much we, in Jesus' name, want to grant forgiveness. Something is wrong with us. And what is wrong with us is that we are the victims of Christian indoctrination in the Americas. Because the Bible has a different picture of what it means to forgive. We were given scraps to eat by the slave master. He raped our women and raped our men and destroyed our families. But yet and still, because he gave us the slave Bible, a Bible with select parts just for the slave. It is in the Bible Institute Museum in Washington, D.C. It has slaves, forgive your masters. It has be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake forgave you. Why would they do that? Why would they implant that into the psyche of the slave? It is so that an oppressed mentality is a forgiving mentality. And the master needed us to forgive them for whipping us mercilessly. Be kind one to another. They weren't kind to us, but they demanded that we show kindness to them because if a slave was allowed to read and if they read the Bible, they would read that the law, statutes and commands of the Most High Yah, every action has a correlating reaction. There is a response to interpersonal sin. It is not forgiveness. It is a cost to be paid, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a life for a life. You take my donkey, I get your donkey. You kill my servant, I get your servant. There is not this blanket forgiveness. There are three words for forgiveness used in Hebrew in the Tanakh. One is the word salach. It means to pardon someone. Uh, then there is the word kippur, which comes from kippur, uh, where we get yom kippur, uh, to atone or to cover, to pay a ransom for. Then there is the word nasa, which means to lift something up off someone. These senses of forgiveness are always in the Tanakh. Fact check me if you like. These words are always used for Yah's forgiveness of his people. Not everybody, because Yah had enemies. Yah had people that the text even says he hates. But this forgiveness was for the family of Israel. Because often you see that there was not forgiveness when you violated Yah's principles interpersonally. In Shmuel Rishon uh, 15 and 24 through 30, that's 1 Samuel 15, 24 through 30, we see uh, Shmuel not giving forgiveness to King Saul, who asked for the forgiveness. He said, I am not going to worship you because you have rejected Yah, therefore Yah has rejected you. The personal forgiveness was in the family. It was Yosef uh, overlooking and extending grace to his brothers. And he didn't necessarily even forgive them. He just said, what you meant evil for me, Yah meant it for my good. And we see Shmuel and King Shaul. We see David and Nabal and Abigail. David did not forgive Nabal. Abigail came and begged David to spare her husband's life. David said, I only because you asked. I'm about to go do great slaughter on my enemies. But because you've asked, I hear your plea and I will spare his life. Forgiveness, not even grace, is extended in the family of Israel. Not a blanket, 
like Yah will be disappointed if you don't forgive your enemies. That's not the Elohim of the Bible. Furthermore, it is important for you to know that the great and stirring statement that many sermons were preached on, I preached many myself, of Yahshua on the cross saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. I need you to know, fact check me, I need you to know that it is not in the original manuscripts. It's not in the Byzantine manuscripts. It's not in the Egyptian or Aramaic witnesses. It's not in the original manuscript. Some later scribe inserted it. Why would they insert it? Because the Roman Empire, the Catholic Church, who is the same mechanism that was the vehicle for murdering Yeshua, needed out of the mouth of the Savior to hear, forgive them for they know not what they're doing because it absolved them of their crime against Hamashiach. It is not in the original manuscripts. It's an interpolation, a later addition. Even in the millennial kingdom, we see in the book of Zechariah that Yah demands after he comes with great slaughter, you, you know, he doesn't forgive his enemies. Yah is coming to destroy the wicked. It says that the survivors of those who had attacked Israel, they must come to present themselves at the Feast of Tabernacles. If they do not, Yah says, you will have no rain. Doesn't sound like forgiveness to me. Yah says, even though I allowed you to live, if you don't do what I need to do, even in this kingdom, you'll have no rain. We've got to have a different understanding. It is not our responsibility to forgive wicked, evil oppressors. Pray for them if you like, but I ain't hugging nobody. Peace. No way I forget what you done. Get what you done for my people. I won't forget what you done for me.